system. Perfect is like infinite. There really is no such thing as perfect. Perfect is an ideal that doesn't exist that you, you uh, can imagine, but isn't real. Is your body perfect? Well, no, your body gets along real well. All the cells communicate, you know, the brain uh, uh, controls the nervous system, which makes all the pieces move and the skin cells and the blood cells and the oxygen transfer with the hemoglobin and all of it works real well most of the time, but it's not a perfect system. Sometimes there are issues. Sometimes there are problems. It's but the it's, same with any it system. It is as perfect as our limited ability to conceive of perfect yes it's it, it, just so like the ocean that it appears it that it appears to be yeah perfect. that part of the larger conscious now you know when i say the larger conscious system we're part of that larger consciousness system you know you and i and all the other individuated units of consciousness which is the raccoons and the dogs and the monkeys as well all of this consciousness is part of the larger conscious system so we're it and it's us but besides that there's also parts of this larger consciousness system that is the, the um, executive component. And with computers, we'd, we'd say the operating system, you know, the part that kind of keeps the rest of it more productive. So is, as we look at this executive function of the larger consciousness system, the source of the rules and so on, if you will, the source of the structure, the source of our virtual reality, you know, the, the source that decided to compute this virtual reality and set up the simulation so that we individuated units of consciousness would have a, a better learning lab. See, that's the executive function. And we look at that and that appears to us to be both infinite and perfect. Because like the ocean, it's so much bigger than we are as being little pieces of it. It seems so large we can't really comprehend the largeness of it. So we say, that's infinite, but now we're using the word infinite as a metaphor. A metaphor that means bigger than we can ever imagine. Not as a technical term. You see, and as long as we use the word infinite and perfect as metaphors, which means it seems infinite to us, it seems perfect to us, then fine, it's infinite and perfect, as those words are metaphors. Now when we start thinking of, oh no, it's really infinite, then that's silliness because nothing can be infinite. If it were infinite and could grow just one more cell, then it would be bigger than infinite. Well, no, now infinite's a bigger number. Well, it really wasn't infinite in the first place. Well, there really is no such thing as infinite. It's just an abstract concept. Perfect is pretty much an abstract concept too. Perfect, uh, and, and if you have a very simple system, let's say you have two two simple things, you know, all your system is just two sticks and two balls, you know, and you may say, I want to arrange these in a way that uh, takes up the, well, I don't know, the, the least amount of volume, so you want the sticks to be really close together, not kind of at right angles, which would produce more area, and you could say, ah, oh, now that's perfect. Well, okay, a very simple system, you may come to that conclusion, but if you start looking at it in detail, it's probably not perfect. If you look right down at the atomic or molecular level, how do you describe that area? And what do you mean minimum area? There's little, there's little uh, uh, molecules of those sticks and balls are, are vibrating in and out. You, know, you can't even define the area that it takes up. So if we look at it simplistically from a, from a uh, kind of on a big scale, we might see that we have a perfect solution to a problem. But that's a very simple problem with very few you know, dimensions and very few interactions in it. Once you talk about consciousness, and just on this planet there's seven, seven plus you know, billions of us that can interact and interact with our environment, now it becomes so complex that to think of us, seven billion plus the other hundreds of billions of other you know, uh, individuated units of consciousness in the, in the uh, animal world, to think all of that as somehow being perfect, well, yeah, if it's just a metaphor, but if you're talking about really perfect as a, not a metaphor, but as an exact thing, it doesn't make any sense. So there is no perfect and there is no infinite 
at all as long as you're talking about real systems. The consciousness system is a real system. We're real. The consciousness is real. So it's not perfect and it's not infinite. So in that way, you see, that's kind of a, that's kind of different. But I think most religions, when they talk about their infinite perfect God, they're not talking in terms of precise absolutes. They're talking really in terms of metaphors. It seems infinite and it appears to be perfect. And sure, I'll agree with that. And this executive function of the larger conscious system would seem like that to us. It, we would seem so small and insignificant next to it and we would seem um, so imperfect next to it that we would get that sense of it being infinite and perfect. But that's, I think that's what the, really the difference is. But people get wound up around those words, oh no, it really is infinite. And they don't realize that even what they're saying is illogical. To say that something is indeed infinite is an illogical statement. It, uh, there is no thing that's infinite. In, you know, in any, any way. So that's the... I think that explains it very well. And if we are, as you say, part of this larger consciousness system, we are actually a part of it. And as some believe, we are a part of God. We are probably the imperfect part of this larger consciousness system. And the executive is much more of a perfection than we can even imagine so that the in, looking at it as an entire system the uh, we are certainly the less perfect part of it and that in yeah. that way you can uh, yeah and people then would say well why is there a less perfect why is there a less perfect part why doesn't the part that's more grown up and whatever just make everything like itself well there's no advantage in that it's just taken itself and made itself bigger. Where's it? Where's the advantage? There's nothing. Uh, all right, now what? What is it bought with that? You know, what's the advantage to the system of just saying, all right, I'm going to get rid of everything that's imperfect, imperfect in a, in a uh, very, very uh, metaphorical way. Okay, I'm going to get all. I'm going to get rid of all that bad stuff and just let it all be. Just it'll just be me. Cut all that other other stuff out, and then I'll just be be well. That's where I was when I started this. Right? That's, that's very limiting. That's not the point. The point is this thing isn't perfect in the sense it's still evolving. It's evolving too. It's becoming more. And it, it gains, you see, it's a matter of capacity. It's got all of this capacity, all of this, these ones and zeros, if you like to you know, devote, you know, take your capacity down to, down to ones and zeros. And the executive part only fills up a certain amount of that. Okay, now just making itself bigger to be redundant and filling all the rest of it up with redundant copies of itself doesn't add anything new to the process. It just takes what you have and you know, fills up all the capacity with what you have by being redundant. That redundancy isn't growth. See, there's no growth in redundancy. If you have, a, if you write a, you know, if you write a story, okay, you've written a story, now you're going to make 100 Xerox copies of it. You haven't written 100 stories. It's just one story. And see, there's nothing new created. See what I mean? There's no creativity. There's no advancement. There's no growth out of just duplicating what you already have. Where there's growth is taking something that hasn't been made up yet and writing a new story. See, that's where the growth is. So it's not just that, why doesn't this executive part just duplicate itself all over all of its capacity and then it's done, it's all perfect. Isn't that what it wants to be, all perfect? No, that's not the point. The point is in the creation, in the growing, in the becoming love. That's where the evolution comes from. That's how it evolves and how it grows into something else, something other than what it is, becomes bigger and greater and more than it was. That's evolution. Evolution didn't evolve a fish and then make a duplicate copy and now there's nothing in the world but fish. Just this one kind of fish. You know, there's just, you know, a goldfish. And that's all. Just one sterile, not a male and a female even, just one goldfish. And now there's, you know, seven billion goldfish in the world. Well, 
What a, you know, what a great leap forward that was. You see, it doesn't get you anywhere. That's not the point. Evolution doesn't work that way. Evolution is about change, about becoming, becoming more than what you were. So you go from single cell to multi cell to jellyfish, you know, to fish, to reptiles, to, you know, so on up. And you end up with people and critters and all sorts of insects and all sorts of things, trees and plants. Well, that's what this larger consciousness system is doing. It's in a state of evolution. It's a real thing and it's evolving. It's becoming more. So just duplicating itself and saying it's done is of no value. It's still changing, evolving, growing. And we're part of that evolutionary process. So all of the capacity doesn't need to be used up through duplication. It needs to be used up through creation, through growth, through becoming. And that's what we're doing. We're becoming love. We're growing up. And as we do, the whole system is becoming and growing up with us. As we learn to make these choices, we're moving the, we're moving the, the um, I don't know, the, the energy, the value, the purpose of this thing to a higher level than it is now. So it's not that it's perfect, but our growth has helped making it more perfect, helped making it greater than it is. It's evolving and we're part of that evolution. So you see, it's, a, it's not a matter of just, okay, it's perfect, get rid of all the imperfect parts and we're done. Why wouldn't it just do that? Well, then it's just it by itself and it's done. What happens to systems that have no more potential for growth? They start to come apart. If you're not evolving, you're probably de-evolving. You can't just sit still and be stable. I mean, we know that, right? If you stop growing, you start to come apart. If you say, I'm done, I don't want to grow, I don't want to learn anything else, you don't just stay right where you were. You start to, you start to come apart, you start to dissipate. Your entropy starts drifting upward because you're no longer in a growth process. We have to continually be adding and growing and evolving. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us alive. When we stop growing, we get stagnant. When we get stagnant, we don't care. When we don't care, things start to fall apart. And then we still don't care. And pretty soon we are de-evolved. We disappear. Well, it's the same with the larger consciousness system. It has to keep evolving and growing and becoming. It has to still be creative. It can't just say, I'm done. I'm pretty perfect right now, so I'm just going to stay here. I'm just not going to do anymore. I'm going to fill up all my ones and zeros with my own wonderful sublime perfection and then I'm done. I'm going to retire, go move to the beach. You can't, you know, that's the beginning of de-evolution. That's when it starts to dissipate and fall apart and entropy starts to go up. You have to continually be in a creative process of growing, otherwise you end up in an uncreative process of dissolution. So that's why we are in this system. And yes, there is an executive part of it that tends to, to uh, be the operating system, if you will, and set the rules and develop virtual realities. But it's growing with our growth. We're creating. We're developing. And it's not just us, but consciousness, all of individuated consciousness is evolving and as we evolve we evolve to something greater than what it is now you see so we're, we're creating another thing so that's why i say it's not per if it was perfect it'd be done see this concept that you can have a real system and it's just perfect and just sits there well not if it's a complex aware consciousness system that's that's about change and growth. Even if it's just a rock, it doesn't just sit there. Little molecules of it fly off and eventually, if you wait long enough, the rock will just be nothing but little particles all through the, you know, all through the, uh, all through the universe probably, but at least all through the planet. You know, the, even rocks just dissipate if they don't do anything. If you watch long enough, you know, because little, everything has a vapor pressure. Even steel and rocks and dirt has vapor pressure. What that means is that Molecules will just by chance get enough energy to separate from the whole and fly off. Everything sublimates. We can see that with an ice cube. If you leave an ice cube in a freezer long enough, the ice cube will get smaller and smaller and smaller 
until it just disappears. What happened to the ice cube? Well, the water molecules, one or two or three at a time, just happen to get enough energy to fly off. And we never see water, but the ice actually sublimates into vapor, and the ice cube just disappears. Well, everything has a vapor pressure. Steel will do that too. If you take a bunch of steel and you set it someplace, if you were to wait long enough, the steel would work just like the ice cube. It would just eventually disappear, you see. So things that aren't growing, things that are just static and sitting there, oh, I'm perfect, I just sit here and I'm static. That's not something that can continue. That's something that starts to decay. We don't want a perfect system that's done. This is sitting there done. That's not the goal. That wasn't the goal of the, you know, of the multi-celled thing to just now sit there and make, you know, seven, you know, 700 billion goldfish, you know, that wasn't the answer to that evolution found profitable. What it found profitable was to keep growing and changing and uh, doing different things and creating. And consciousness system is the same way. Well, thank you, Tom, for your explanation of your model of how the larger consciousness system works. It was perfect. I mean, excellent. <laughs> well, thank you, Donna. It's, as usual, it's always fun to sit down and have these conversations with you. We never know exactly where they're going to lead. Not at all. They just start out and we just let them go wherever they go. But Not it's a all, single note. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun, though. So thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom.